scripture. Beginning in Romans chapter 11 and verse number one. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. All right. For I myself am an Israelite. Mm -hmm. Descendant of Abraham. Member of the tribe of Benjamin. Right. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah? How he appeals to God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have demolished your altars. And I alone am left. And they seek my life. But what is God's reply to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. All right. So, too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. But it is, if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. Mm -hmm. All right. That's a good place for us to start digging in. Let's have a word of prayer. Brother Terry Gordon, would you please lead us in that? Yes, sir. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for another day, Lord, that you let us go about our busy walks of life. Father in heaven, as we study thy word tonight, let Brother Brown down in deep treasure your word. May bring out the understanding and may continue to trust you. Lord, continue to bless him all the days of his life. May he run this Christian race, not only him, but all of us, Lord, and give us a home in thy eternal kingdom is not made with hand. Our Father in heaven, forgive us of our sin and trespasses, our word, thought, and deed. The Father of Heaven, bless us to get out of the place and touch the men of the city that would be able to break ground before the years out. And the Lord, bless all the sick and afflicted down in the country, especially those of the household of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, brother. I've been reading lately the books of Samuel, First and Second Samuel. Now I'm reading on further beyond that. And what strikes me is how much God's grace comes through. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about it, God really did not have to do anything further for Abraham's descendants than he had done. He never really had to do anything for Abraham, but he did. He allowed the grace that he sent to Abram result into the establishment of Israel. But as you know, Israel repeatedly, repeatedly, as the scripture uses the phraseology, played the harlot on God. Yes, he did. And so the nation eventually had to be split. And then the nation, both sides, Judah and Israel, had to be taken into captivity. Why? And then God saved a remnant from Judah and allowed them to come back to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But the people were never the same. And as time went on, God had that nation, that area, conquered over and over again. It was conquered by, eventually, Alexander the Great. Then it was conquered by the Romans. Mm -hmm. So by the time Jesus was on the earth, and by the time Jesus had left the earth, you had a remnant of God's people scattered around the world. And those people were the ones, some of them, that Paul was writing to. Mm -hmm. Along with Jews or Gentiles, rather, in the same congregation. And he wanted to help the Jewish people who had a long memory right. pass down through generations. That memory of God's promises was troubling in their minds because they were thinking, well, wait a minute. Doesn't look like anything's going to happen. Looks like we lost it. And then you had Gentiles sitting in that same church who were saying, you sure did. And so now the apostle wants to try to help the Jewish 
people and the Gentiles with their understanding of God and what he was doing. All right. And so in this 11th chapter, as it is in our Bibles, the apostle starts talking about what about Israel? Mm -hmm. What is it that God can, will, wants to do? And as we've seen in our studies thus far, Israel isn't totally forgotten. We talked about this first set of points that this whole letter has behind it the thought that no human can go to God at the end of his life and say, I've done so well, you owe me salvation. Right. And also, Israel, even with a knowledge of God, at least, at least by generational uh, knowledge passed down, they didn't lack knowledge of God's will, but they, they, they couldn't do it. So they were in as worse a condition as were Gentiles. And in chapter 3, we have the instruction from the apostle that the only way that anybody could be saved was going to have to be that God does it other than human ability. All right. And so the only way to have salvation is through faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. All of what that means, as we've said several times. So a remnant shall be saved. This is what God gave to the Apostle Paul almost 2,000 years ago. And I want to say at the outset that the outworking of God's plan for Israel is not yet complete. Mm -hmm. It is still in the works. So a remnant shall be saved is what Paul teaches in this first few verses. Picking it up at verse 7, what then? Israel failed to obtain what it was seeking. The elect obtained it, but the rest were hardened. As it is written, God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes that would not see, uh -huh. and ears that would not hear. Down to this very day, and Paul was talking about his day in the first century. And David says, let their table become a snare and a trap, mm -hmm. stumbling block and a retribution for them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see and bend their backs forever. This was a condemnation against the nation that eventually rejected Jesus. But still a remnant shall be saved. Mm -hmm. God knew that Israel would act the way she acted. He already knew that. So again, in verse 2, God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. He knew what they would do, just like he knows what we do. Right. The amazing thing about God is his foreknowledge gives him a 4D picture, 4K picture, whatever the latest video is. It gives him the highest definition quality picture you can ever have. And yet, he doesn't force the action. All right. He lets man work in his own choice. Uh -huh. But remember, the choice of man never overrules the power of God. It's not like man can climb up into heaven like they said they were going to try to do in the Tower of Babel and check things out. Yeah. <laughs> God has a way of stopping things when he gets enough of it. You're all right. And yet he does give us free will. You got to keep thinking about this. You and I have to keep thinking about this when we even think about our world right now, our country right now. This is election day. Many people have fear and trepidation as to what may happen. But we have to understand the foreknowledge of God. God knew a Trump would come before Trump knew he would come. Yep, yep. I knew the aftermath of this stuff would be even though no one knew but him. Amen. He lets it be seen. And he allowed it to keep on going. Away. Whoever wins tonight or this week, God will allow our choice. But at the end of the day, yeah, he will man. never let our choice overrule his will. There you go. That's the part we have to understand. God knew Israel would do what she did. God knows what people will do, and yet he doesn't force them to do it. His mercy enters, though, his grace enters to give opportunity for those who want to accept it 
to enjoy his favor. So the remnant of Israel will be saved. Mm -hmm. And our election, along with the remnant, is all an act of grace by God. Amen. Never forget Ephesians chapter 2, right. 8 through 10. It's by grace right. that oh, yeah. we are saved. Mm -hmm. Not works. It's, our, it's the grace of God through faith that brings us salvation. And the remnant, the Jews that will be saved in the end, won't be based upon their effort. Just like our salvation will not be based upon our effort. No, oh, sir. So Israel does have a place in God's plan. And this is the part that gets so interesting in terms of trying to understand it. Beginning at verse 11, so I asked, did they stumble in order that they might fall? By no means. Rather, through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So as to make Israel jealous. Oh, that's good stuff. Right. That's good stuff. The Jews' rejection of Jesus, who biologically was one of their own, right. opened the door for all other nations all right. to come to the Lord Jesus. There's not a descendant from Africa that would come to Jesus unless the Jews had rejected him. Mm -hmm. There's not a descendant of Europe, Asia, any place that would come to Jesus Save Israel rejecting. Now, if Israel doesn't reject Jesus, Jesus doesn't die on the cross. If Jesus doesn't die on the cross, we can't have our sins again. That's right. So their rejection, according to verse number 13, uh, I'm sorry, verse number 11, uh, their rejection opened the door for you and me to come to Christ as well as to make them jealous. <laughs> Verse 12, now if their trespass means riches for the world, and it does, and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, and it does, mm -hmm. how much more will their full inclusion mean? Paul is trying to make the point that, yeah, they messed up badly, but it didn't shock God. Oh, man. And the fact that their mess up opened the door for you and me Praise God. And the fact that their mess up and our being included in God's favor caused some to get jealous and say, wait a minute. Uh -huh. <laughs> I want some of this too. Yeah. Then it's amazing celebration when both Jew and Gentile All right. get to come to Jesus. All right. That's what Paul is getting at. So if you look at verse number 15, well, let me back up to verse 13. Now, I am speaking to you, Jen. Oh, he's talking to you and me. And as much then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, Paul came to us, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous uh -huh. and yeah. let save some of them. Now, think about this. If you're a Jew and you uh, claim God to be your own, Mm -hmm. uh, and, and all of a sudden you find out some Gentiles are showing up. He's going to say, wait a minute. Who invited them to the show? All right. <laughs> you, you, you start getting jealous. And say, well, how did they get to the show? Oh, they right. got to the show by faith in Christ. I guess yeah. I'm going to put my pride down and get faith in Christ too. Yes, sir. Because I want to be in the show that they're in. They got an invite. I want to get an invite. Yes, sir. So Paul said, I preached to the Gentiles and invited them into God's favor, and I hope that along the way I can make some of these Jewish folk jealous. Right. Because these people that they thought were nothing more but fit for the fires of hell mm -hmm. are now coming in and they get in the front seat that we thought we were supposed to be in. How did they get in? They got in by faith in Christ. I guess we better stop our stubbornness yeah. and have faith in Christ. Mm-hmm. I bring to your mind Acts chapter 2. Men and brethren, what shall we do? That's right. Repent, be baptized. Every one of you. That's what you do. Yeah. So as we keep looking in this text of scripture, verse number 
15, for if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, come on, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? <laughs> That's right. If the dough offered as first fruits is holy, so is the whole lump. You enter. Right. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. Branch. Oh man, yeah. he's got to get into some real good stuff now. Mm -hmm. Because now he's got to break off the fact that you and I got included in the plan that initially was proclaimed only for the Jews. So the Gentiles, when we accept the way of righteousness by faith, and that was used to provoke, provoke Israel to see the same way of righteousness, then Thankfully for them, they get that jealousy moves them to accept that way. And as we sing the song, when we all get to heaven, what right. rejoicing it will be. So Israel, they, you and I don't know God without Israel. That's true. We really don't. As Gentiles, we don't have a knowledge of God as revealed to them uh -huh. without them. Right. Even when our ancestors in this country were enslaved, don't you know that the great majority of them had hope based on what they read, heard about Moses and deliverance from Pharaoh, about all the things of the great prophets, the stories they heard, they identified with placing themselves in the state of people oppressed, like the Jews were oppressed by the Egyptians, uh -huh. hoping for deliverance. Swing low, sweet cherry. Carry me home. Coming home, coming to carry me home. Yeah. Elijah and the wheel within the wheel. You, you, this stuff really? doesn't help by, by happenstance. Mm -hmm. Our more. knowledge of God the God of heaven comes through the Jews. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the root of our understanding. And of course, it's clarified when we understand the message of Jesus. So without Israel, we, we really don't have a knowledge of the true God. Look at verse number 16 in this text. If their rejection, I mean, I mean verse 16, if the dough uh, offered as first fruits is holy, so the whole lump, and if the root is holy, so are the branches. We came to know about God through Israel. Look at verse 17. But if some of the branches were broken off and you, talking about you and me, although a wild olive shoot yeah. were grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree, don't be arrogant toward the branches. All right. If you are, remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. All right. Oh, that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, we got to make it up. We got to put feet, feet on it. Got to put legs on it. Mm -hmm. Let your mind transport itself back into the church in Rome. Let's just imagine it's a modern day church building. It wasn't, but let's just imagine. All right. Gentiles come in, they come black folk, tipping. <laughs> Brothers tipping, sisters uh, tipping. We come in, we get on our side of the building. <laughs> from Europeans tipping in. Yeah. Get on, their, get on the same side. Here comes some Hispanic folk, Latino folk. Uh, here's some folk from Asia, all of us sitting on the other side. We're the Gentile side. Yeah. And we're looking over at the Jews and talking about, y'all blew it, man. We took over there. And then we're sitting there, and the preacher get up, and he one of us. Uh oh. <laughs> and we really looking over there and said, man, y'all done messed up. We own this joint. Uh -oh. Besides, y'all got kicked out uh, of, the, of the area and you just been allowed to come back in. And we took over the eldership. Man, what y'all talking about? <laughs> we get the bragging like that. Uh -huh. And Paul's letter is being read. And Paul's letter says, check yourself. Check yourself. You wouldn't be here if it weren't for those folk on that side. All right. Paul, what do you mean? Who did you get your understanding of God from if it was not from Jewish you? Because God appeared to them. Right. God didn't appear to Kuta Kinta. 
No, he didn't. God appeared to Moses. Right. You know, uh, God appeared to Abram. Mm -hmm. God appeared to the nation of Israel in, in total, is my, my point. He, he, he appeared to the Jewish people. So we get a chance to know the Lord through the knowledge he gave them. And therefore, Paul's point is that Gentiles can't be arrogant thinking that, oh, well, we're better. No, 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 we are all the same. That's right. Because we all have a sin problem. Yes, sir. And we all come to Jesus the same way. And so then he gives this analogy of the branches. He gives this analogy of an olive tree. And he makes it very clear. Back to verse 19. Then you will say branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. That is true. Mm -hmm. They were broken off because of their unbelief. But you stand fast through faith. Right. So not become proud, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Yeah. So in the idolatry imagery, some old branches were cut off. They were unproductive. Jesus said, I am the true vine. Yeah. You are the branches. He talks about how the branch can't do anything without the, without the vine. Right, that's right. So the branches from the wild olive tree are Gentiles. Yes. They were inserted into the main olive tree. Yes, sir. And as a result of that, the original tree became reinvigorated. Mm -hmm. So put it in racial terms, we help Jews. <laughs> but then the new branches are bolstered in fruitfulness because they got the sap coming from the main tree. Right. <laughs> Jews help Gentiles. Gentiles help Jews. All right. That's a reciprocal relationship. And this is what you ought to have, Paul says, in that context among Jews and Gentiles. But check this out. What better way to get harmony in the church oh. than to let both folk know nobody's better than the other. There you go. They all benefit. Now take that a step further and look at some of the dynamics we still have today. White churches in Huntsville, black churches in Huntsville, neither are Jewish. Right. If Jews and Gentiles were told to get along, even because uh, uh, the, the, the original vine, if you will, being Israel uh, and the branches grafted in being, being Gentiles, you know, if they were to get along, mm -hmm. Gentiles and Jews, Gentiles not being God's original people, Jews are, and they're told to get along. What ought Gentiles and Gentiles should do? What should we be doing? Getting along. <laughs> you, you shouldn't have any Gentiles looking at each other talking about, I'm better than you. That's right. That's right. Man. No, Mayfair is no better than Westview. That's right. Westview is no better than Mayfair. Right. <laughs> I'm just using those as an example. We're all Gentiles. Right. No black congregations ought to be competing about who's better. That's it. We're all Gentiles. In Jesus Christ. And we have been brought together along with Jews and told to be one in Christ Jesus. That's it. And if any of us get proud, look at verse 21. Mm -hmm. If God did not spare the natural branches, those are the Jews. Yeah. Neither will he spare you. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And yet, practically in every city, I'm sure, across this country, you got congregations not in competition with the devil, <laughs> in competition with each other. Yeah. And the devil got it going. The devil is sitting back telling me, yeah, y'all keep on knocking each other off. Mm -hmm. Keep on doing that. By the time you're all done, the one that's left will be too tired and I'll take all of you. <laughs> yeah. We, we have to learn what this thing is all about. Sure we are, boy. It's about oneness in Christ Jesus. That is it, Michael. Ain't nothing else. And man. this is why this text spoke volumes to the church in Rome. And I think it ought to speak volumes to the church today. Yeah. It really needs to speak volumes. We, we really need to get this and see that 
It's about oneness, all based on the grace of God. Right, you have a Hispanic church, a white church, a black church, or an Asian church. Now you got, you got a bunch of olives. <laughs> and we ought to be grateful to be an olive. Yeah, we ought to be grateful to be a branch in the tree. Mm -hmm. Along with our brothers and sisters mm -hmm. from Israel. So now, let's look a little bit further in this text. Notice verse number 22. Note then the kindness and the severity of God. Severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you. But here's a proviso. God's kindness to us is provided you continue in his kindness. Right. That's important to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. I think Christians are forgetting that one today. I think we're forgetting that not only can't we cop an attitude of being arrogant toward Israel, but we also have to remember that we can lose God's goodness. That's important. So, so here's, a, here's a tension to keep in mind. On the one hand, you and I can't earn God's favor. It was given to us. Right. On the other hand, we can't act like how we act doesn't make a difference. <laughs> We're not going to heaven anyhow, acting any other way we want. There is the goodness of God, which came to us not based on our merit. That's right. But there's the favor of God that will only continue with us if we have a heart toward God. Right. So our standing in God's family can be lost if we fail to continue in God's goodness. And, and too many pulpits basically say, look, just love Jesus and don't worry about anything you do. Oh, no. You got to understand what that statement means. If you mean by that, growing your love for Jesus and that will automatically keep you away from walking away from it. If you're saying that, I get it. But if all you're saying is, hey, just keep coming on Sunday, do some chanting songs, and then go out and live any way you want. No. That's not right. No, no, no. Not and so the text of Scripture tells us very plainly, note the kindness and the severity of God, severity toward those who have fallen, but yeah. God's kindness to you, and here it is again, provide you continue in his yeah. kindness. That's right. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. Well, that's a message. Yes, you will. That, that is a message. Yeah, my boy. God, God doesn't want us walking around scared to death of him, but he wants us to respect him. Amen. He wants us to have love for him. Right. And that love determines our behavior. God is mm -hmm. looking for perfection from us. Right. If we were looking for perfection from us, we'd been we'd, we'd be done already. Yeah. I'd have been done about 7:15 this morning. I've been at Come on, boy. <laughs> I know that's right. Mike. He, he's not looking <laughs> for perfection. Right. He's your way. He is looking for faithfulness. That's right. So look at marriage. This is this is why God uses marriage so often talking about our relationship with him. Uh you spouses, whether you be a husband or wife, your spouse shouldn't be looking for perfection in you. That's, what's wrong. If that's the case. Once again, you messed up. You, you, yeah. messed up. you probably were done as soon as you got on the other side of the room. Right then. That's right. The but your spouse is looking for faithfulness. That's right, boy. There's a big difference there. Mm -hmm. Faithfulness means, okay, I know you got some flaws, but hey, you He's striving to, to be right, and you, you, I don't have to worry about where you are. All right. You know, you don't go out for a loaf of bread and come back three weeks later. <laughs> I, I don't need to worry about that. <laughs> right, boy. That's faithful. God wants faithfulness. For bread three weeks later. <laughs> so we talk about the goodness of God. Yeah, brother. You know, it's his quality. Goodness means helpful. God is helpful. But goodness means beneficial. It means kind. It means generous. God is all of that and more. So we ought to note the, the goodness of God, the kindness of God. 
lead us to repentance. We got to look at the severity too. Mm -hmm. So our faith, our good conduct makes it proper for God, not, not required of God makes it proper for God to continue his kindness toward us. All right. It's not that he owes us, but because of his nature, when he sees you and me seeking to be faithful, he rewards us he with kindness. And then we got to understand what we said before. This is highlighted in the yellow. Our obedience is an instant, indispensable condition for God's favor to be continued. Mm -hmm. Let's put it this way. God's not continue, he's not going to continue to grant us favor if all we do is shake our fists at him. Why would he do that? He's not going to allow us to say, well, look, I'm, I'm God. I'll do what I want to do. No. And he says, oh, okay, fine. I'm going to keep on favoring Brown. Doesn't mm -hmm. work that way. Doesn't work that way. That's right. This is what Paul is getting at here. But then he goes on a little bit further, beginning at verse 25. Lest you be wise in your own sight, I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery. All right, he's about to give us a mystery here. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. All right. And in this way, all Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come from Zion. He will bring yeah. ungodliness from Jacob. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. All right. Let's look at that. So God still has a plan for saving Israel. You got to understand this. First of all, it's, this is a mystery in the sense that God hasn't fully revealed and unveil what this plan is going to be. I don't know what it's going to be. Nobody else does either. Even all these guys who come on TV and they talk about, well, uh, God's going to uh, bring the Jews back to Jerusalem. They're going to kick the, the Muslims out. They're going to rebuild the temple. And Jesus. People talk and try to explain what God has yet to explain. He just said it's a mystery. So how all this will be unfolded is yet to be seen. And fullness is an interesting term. God says to Paul, uh, whatever he's going to do for Israel, it won't happen until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Well, that's deep. That's deep. Fullness, full number, that hasn't been, the, the, the full number of Gentiles, to come into the kingdom hasn't happened yet. It's been almost 2,000 years on this side of time, and it hasn't happened yet. Well, that is a powerful concept because that lets us know we start thinking, well, I'm going to stop preaching the gospel because nobody's obeying anymore. God said the fullness of the Gentiles Hadn't come in yet. Mm -hmm. Look, if you fish, and I don't, but I know people who do, including those on the phone. <laughs> if the lake, the pond is stocked with all kinds of fish, and you're having a good day catching 10 a second, mm -hmm. and you love fishing, yeah, you're not going to quit. You'll say, man, the fullness of this boat hadn't happened yet. <laughs> Bring them in. You and I are still in this world right now because there are a lot of folks among Gentiles who they need to be saved. Right. And there's room at the cross. Mm -hmm. And Paul is saying the fullness of that number hadn't come yet. Right. And there's room. There's, there's room. Right? The reservation for heaven hasn't been filled up. So everybody you meet who has a heart is a potential person be saved. Be part of that number. So don't give up on your friends. Don't get up on. Don't give up on your neighbors. Don't give up on your family members. All right. The fullness of the Gentiles is not yet here. And then when Paul talks about all Israel, he's not talking about every Jewish person that's ever lived. 
He's not talking about that when he talks about all Israel. You see, if he meant all the Jews ever, then it would, would be all the Jews ever. Even the ones that were wicked. You know, if he meant all the Jews are going to be saved, better go get Jeroboam and put him in there. Better go get a whole lot of other ones that were wicked, put them in there. So understand that all Israel does refer to everyone in the nation throughout the nation's history. So are those that will have obedient heart. So when we look at this text again, this is future looking. Look, if you would, with me in this text, verse 26. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. He's not talking about yet every Jew that ever lived. But those who would have a heart to obey the gospel. All right. Otherwise, you would have folk getting in there that you know wouldn't be getting in there. All right. Verse number 28, as regards the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as regards the election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. Abraham, Moses, even David, throw some of them in there. Mm -hmm. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Oh, praise God. God's plan for Israel can't be changed. It doesn't mean that all the Jews will be saved. But it does mean that when he promised salvation for Jews, he's not changing that. A remnant shall be saved. Now, think about this. If God, throughout, out, throughout all the history of human history, in terms of the Jewish people, if, if God has said throughout all the things you read about Jewish people, that look, a remnant will be saved, and that's not going to change. Okay. If he said that about them. Guess what he said about us? Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. And that is irrevocable. Let me tell you this tonight. I can guarantee it. Heaven is not going to be closed and nobody be in there. Hey, right. <laughs> Somebody getting in. And I know that you join with me. I, 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 I want to be in that number. That number. Yeah. When they, when they pull out the banquet table, I want to be there with a biscuit. Yes, sir. <laughs> Looking for seconds. Yes, sir. So this is very powerful. Let's go ahead and try to wrap this up uh, in this chapter tonight. We'll be wrapping up this session. So notice, if you will, verse number 30. But just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience. Mm -hmm. So they too have now been disobedient in order that the by the mercy shown to you, they, they also may... Now receive mercy. Like a boomerang. Look at verse 32. For God has consigned all to disobedience that he might have mercy on how many? All. All. And then Paul, Paul breaks out into a dance. Oh, the depth and the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. And how inscrutable his ways. Okay, it's fine now. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has been his counselor? Nobody. Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? Mm -hmm. But from him and through him and in him are all things. Mm -hmm. To him be glory forever. Amen. This is indeed So this is a quote. From Isaiah, Paul is dealing with some things here, basically talking about all the great things that God has done and will do. This is what we've been talking about as we try to wrap this up. Israel's future is set because God's will is irrevocable. And once again, that's based on the spore knowledge. And when we think about this, it should be comfort for us. God called us as well. Mm -hmm. Election is based on grace and foreknowledge. <laughs> You're not a Christian by accident. Nope. You're just not. It's not like you wandered down the street and fell into the blood of Christ. That's not what that's not what happened. <laughs> no. <laughs> you made a choice. Yeah. And God elect you based on his foreknowledge of your response. There you go, Mike. 
So when Fletch heard the gospel, and it's as if God, when he saw Fletch obey the gospel, it, it, it's as if God said, man, yep, yeah, I remember I wrote that some time ago. Yeah. I saw that movie. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't make him do it, but I, but I knew what he would do. Yeah. I, 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 that's just good news. That's just good news. Yes, sir. So let's wrap up with this. Here's some things to remember. And you've seen this big term eschatological. It means the teaching, the doctrine of last things, things coming forward. Here's something to keep in mind. Uh, when it comes to the, about the, the end of the end of time things, they're, they're not really designed for us to try to figure it out. It's not jeopardy, right? You know, let me have end of the world for 5,000. That's not what it's is. It's not will of fortune. Or is there a P? No. You can't figure out things that God has, seen, has decided to hide. Uh, they're not designed for us to decipher by methods of fulfillment. This is the danger of people say, well, you know, I read the tea leaves and in 2026, Jesus is coming again. Hey, you, know, you, you can't come up with stuff like that. You ain't got sense enough. No sense. And if he did come up, you'd be the most shocked person in the world. Yes, sir. <laughs> you'd be like Trump in, in, when he won president. Oh, I won? And you'd be like that. So, <laughs> These are things that God has decided to reveal in his own time. These are things that are sometimes difficult to grasp. They really are. You know, how, what does this mean? Does this mean that uh, when, when, when uh, Israel pulls out bombs and shoots them across the bow and vice versa? No, it's, these are things that are they're, they're difficult to grasp. They are sure to be fulfilled. And uh, these are the things that I want to leave us with tonight. So then we have all of these things coming our way based on what God chose to do with Israel, what they chose to do in response to God, how that brought open door for you and me. And now here we are waiting for the Lord to fulfill all that he will for them as well as for us. All right, I'm going to stop there for tonight, and we'll enter, Lord willing, into our final section next week. But at this point, any questions, any comments, please feel free to share any that you might have. That's good stuff, Michael. You're a good job. Uh, Brother Brown, I have a question. Yes. So you're saying that because of Israel's disobedience, that made room for the rest of us? Yeah, that's what Paul said. Am, am I getting that right? Yes, that's Paul's teaching. Paul says when Israel rejected the Lord, uh -huh. and, and, and think about it again, just, just track it. They rejected Jesus. All right. Pilate wanted to let him go. They said, give us Barabbas. Jesus was crucified. Right. Well, if Jesus wasn't crucified and raised to the dead, how would we come to know Christ? Okay. There'd be no gospel for us. Uh. And so their rejection opened the door for our salvation. Okay. Does that help? Yeah. Any other questions or comments? I thought somebody's trying to play me a tune. They had all the opportunity to, but they just have to 